All right, in this video, we're on to our third day of electrostatics. It's actually our second day looking at the idea of electric field, the idea that we could warn people about force. And last day, we finished up with a, a superposition of fields. We actually had some fields left and right that we had to add up. And today, we're going to look at what uh, for our situation this year is going to be kind of a little bit above and beyond, but it, it's worth taking a look at. What about some two-dimensional superposition of warnings? What if the story looks like this? What if you want to warn people about what would happen if you go and place items at location P and Q1 and Q2 are already there? Yeah, I know they're attracting each other because one is positive, one is negative, but they're already there. They're glued down. They're not going anywhere. And now you're wondering, whoa, well, how serious would it be for us to go and drop charges at location P? Now, if you put a positive charge there, it'll get pushed one way, a negative charge will get pushed the other. Let's, but let's see what we can do with this, this idea of warning people with fields. So the question is, what is the total electric field, the total amount of warning that's necessary at point P because Q1 exists and because Q2 exists? They're already there. They're creating a dangerous situation where charges at, at point P will get shoved around. Let's go and warn people about that. So electric field number one, warning number one, we've got 12 nanocoulombs and you're eight meters away. Don't forget to square that eight. That warning, it doesn't have a Q2 in the calculation. There's no second Q at point P yet. And that warning ends up being 1.68 newtons per coulomb. Now think about direction. Think of that, that P, instead of standing for point, think of it as standing for proton. If you put a proton where that point P is, which way would the proton get pushed? Now I know the proton does push on the Q1, but don't worry about Q1, it'll be fine. Worry about a little proton placed right here. It would get repelled to the right. So the warning needs to be to the right, saying, hey, watch out, positive charges placed there will get shoved to the right. Same kind of plan for Q2. It creates a warning, a field at point P. We're gonna go K, Q all over R squared. There's no second Q and we end up with 1.25 newtons per coulomb. Okay, now let's think about direction. If you put a little proton here, what would happen to it because of Q2? Well, Q2 would attract it upwards, so we should warn people that positive things would get attracted upwards. Now, this, this kind of higher level question for us, this is as tough as it's gonna get for electric fields. You know, what happens if you had a field to the right with a field that's up, like a field that's north and a field that's east? Well, we have to add them as vectors. So instead of just saying, oh yeah, add them up, you're gonna get like, you know, pretty close to three-ish. No, 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 you have to use Pythagoras. And so when we go and find that hypotenuse, just by applying the Pythagorean theorem and a little bit of right angle trigonometry, we find that the value is 2.1 Newtons per Coulomb and the direction would be 37 degrees north of east. So this direction, that's the direction that positives would get pushed if you put them at point P. If you put a positive there, that's the way it's gonna get pushed. But if you put a negative there, it'll get pushed exactly the opposite way. Okay, now we can do a little follow-up question. At the moment you release it, what would be the acceleration of an electron that's released at that point? So a couple things I'm noticing, right? It's gonna be an electron, so yeah, it's gonna be backwards. And this acceleration, well, it's forces that cause acceleration. And I gotta tell you that after this thing has been released for a, a second or so, when it starts to move, that electron would experience a different force because its location would change. But we're gonna catch it right at the moment that it's released, okay? Just at that millisecond that you let it go. Well, I wanna put two ideas together. One is this fabulous idea of using electric fields to quickly find forces. And then the second one is to say, okay, well, that force will be the only force that's going to be in my net force equation, F equals MA. So I'm just going to take QE, my quick way of finding force, and just drop it in, substitute it in for net force. And we'll see if we can get this all done in kind of one line. So QE calculates the force in Newtons. That's equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, lots of times these electrostatics problems are going to give you numbers in word form. So the electron, you can go and look up its Q value. And for the electron, you can go and look up its mass. So you can just go to your formula sheet and find those values. 
The acceleration will be QE, the force divided by the mass, and that calculation is going to look like this. This number is just straight off the form of the sheet, the elementary charge, right? the size of the charge for an electron. Yeah, I know it's negative. We'll deal with that in a minute. And then here is the mass for an electron. It's a little bit lighter, well, 2,000 times lighter than a proton. Okay, So we put those values in, and we come up with this acceleration, around 3.7 times 10 to the 11 meters per second squared. And that does not violate special relativity at all. You can have massive accelerations. You just can't have really big velocities. Okay, direction, because acceleration is a vector. Well, this direction up here, warning people about force, warns us what would happen to positive things. And you put a negative thing there. So don't say 37 degrees north of east. You need to switch that up and say, no, 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 backwards, 37 degrees south of west. So that'll happen half the time whenever you put a negative charge at that location. Okay, now let's do something a little bit easier. Uh, electric field lines. These are cool things, little pictures, little maps that show you the direction of the electric field. That's all they do is just map out directions of electric field. So three separate stories here. Let's take a look at field line pictures, little field maps for individual charges. So this, um, this positive charge over on the left, what would happen if you put a little proton up above it here on the north side? Well, it would get shoved to the north. And if you took a proton and put it to the right of it, well, it would get shoved to the right. And a proton placed below it, to the south of it, would get repelled to the south. And we can actually tell people that story just by doing this, just drawing a little picture that says, hey, things up here get shoved that way, protons over here get shoved that way, protons below the charge get shoved down to the south, and protons sitting to the west side of the charge will get shoved to the left. Done. You've just drawn an electric field line picture. So think about what that would look like near a negative charge. What would happen to protons if you put them nearby this negative charge? Well, if you've got a mix of polarity, you're going to see attraction. So protons would get pulled in. So we just reverse the direction for our map. Now, if you want to try to be creative and do something different for really big charges, what you could do is actually just draw more lines, right? That's a fairly common, there's a few ways to do it, but that's a fairly common technique to show serious electric fields. Just have more electric field lines, kind of bunch them up a little bit tighter. So the arrows, they show you the direction of the warning, okay, the direction of the electric field. That's really all they're there for. Now you can kind of look at how tight they're packed. I like to call it bunchiness. You can look at how tightly they're packed to think about electric field line intensity. So these two charges on the left, if you were to be kind of off diagonally here, you can see that the blue arrows are pretty far apart there, not a lot of electric field. But on the big negative charge, when you take a look at what's happening there, that the arrows are tighter together. So that tells me that this is a more serious situation. And not only are they just generally tighter together on that third picture, but they get even tighter together when you get close to that charge. So as the arrows tighten up and bunch together, as their density grows, you know that the field's growing as well. There is another technique, I'm just gonna show you this, where you can actually, instead of drawing like single arrows, you can draw lots of little arrows, and the arrows can have different lengths depending on how serious the electric field is. It is a method that works. It's not something we're gonna use, um, but it is actually a process that does work. Okay, what if there are multiple charges on the page? Some sort of superposition story. Well, we're gonna look at a few different scenarios. The first one is a mix. What if you have a positive charge and a negative charge? Now they're glued down. I know they're gonna track each other, but they're glued down. And I want you to imagine you had like a salt and pepper shaker full of protons and you sprinkled them on the page. Which way would they get shoved? It's a picture you just need to memorize. It ends up looking like this. The protons, if you sprinkled them on your paper, would follow those blue arrows. They would generally try to get away from that positive charge and then get attracted towards the negative one. And it's a fairly complicated picture where you've got components of left and right and up and down, but they add up to that story there. And it's probably just a picture you should memorize. And remember, the arrows always leave positives and go to negatives because that's the way protons would get pushed and pulled around. If you have two positives, imagine sprinkling protons down. They would get sprinkled and all over the page and then they'd start to get pushed away. I guess there's technically one little spot right in the middle between those protons 
where a, a little or between those two positive charges I should say where a proton might be able to hover there and not get pushed around and the picture ends up looking like this and you can see it's very unbunched right in the center there right showing that there's no electric field there I'm not going to draw the picture for two negatives I'm just going to tell you that it would look exactly like that second one but the arrows would be reversed protons would get pulled in towards those charges so that's that's an important thing to remember that the arrows always leave positives and head towards negatives they also never cross each other so they never cross each other these blue as I've drawn them here electric field lines they start on positive charges and then they finish they terminate at negative charges when you have multiple charges on the page okay there's just one last little issue to look at sometimes physicists like putting experiments into places where the electric field is nice and clean very beautifully directed and to do that we use parallel plates I've just grabbed a couple of pictures here just from the internet um, this is basically our plan we grab a couple of sheets of metal like they kind of think of like cookie sheets and they're arranged in a nice parallel way with a space between them and we're going to use a battery to charge one of them up positively by removing electrons and the other one negatively by adding electrons and it creates a really nice uniform electric field in between them so there they are those cook those two cookie sheets kind of sitting parallel um, here's another picture where you can see a positive brown sheet and a negative kind of greeny blue one and the electric field beautifully going across from one to the other so I'm going to draw those cookie sheets edge on and you can see I'm using a battery there to charge them up and this is another picture that you just need to know okay and, and know that if you ever want a uniform electric field this is the plan set up two cookie sheets charge them up with a battery and you'll get a nice clean electric field in between them the electric field does kind of bulge out on the sides there's a little bit of what we would call edge effects so if you're trying to get a nice experiment that doesn't have uh, any weird electric fields just stay away from the edge so just two things to add in here it's beautifully constant electric field within the parallel plates it is not only constant in direction it's actually constant in size too the reason for that's pretty complicated but it is beautifully constant in size all throughout that space and you just need to stay away from the edge because there are a couple of edge effects there and that's where we're going to finish off for today.